I think one of the things that's most interesting about it thematically is that it, it talks about the way that cultural attitudes about race and racism are deeply attached for good or ill to personal histories, the way a person has been influenced by, by it, it, very individual events tends to uh, impact the attitudes about race and racism that they have. And with that, it demonstrates how racism is crippling not only to the victim to which it is directed, but to the perpetrator as well. And I think that is the thematic territory that is unique about this play. One of the most important ways you can address racism is by looking at yourself and how you deal with people on a daily basis and what you do when you have an opportunity to make a difference and how does that affect you and your world. From my character's perspective, okay, you're confronted with this issue, this situation, what do you do? That's why it's fabulous to be an actor because you cannot judge. It's our job to justify what happens to you, what happens to you in this, in this world, in this imaginary circumstance. It's fabulous to be an actor because you become a better human being in the process because in the process, in the work process, when you're serving the play, when you're serving the theater, you cannot judge why a character, characters say something or behave this way or do such a thing. Um, it just broadens your perception about humanity and people. I think the play is relevant if you look back to the election, the country itself felt there was a need for change. And even though we didn't know what the outcome would be, people acted on that need. I'm much more interested in telling, well first, telling underserved stories, underrepresented content in the theater, and also stories that, that should be, should be the microcosm of where we are today in the 21st century, so. I think we're still dealing with, uh, with racism, with uh, what it is to be a woman in the workplace is still uh, an issue, and um, which makes the sacrifices that you have to make even more significant. Uh, I play a character named Harvey Kane, who's the manager of a classical radio station in a Midwestern city. Um, and. Harvey has uh, formed his own ideas about his position in life and the position of his business very much, uh, I don't want to give away the specifics of the play, but very much in association with certain things that have happened to him in his life as much as 30 years before the play has begun. Not difficult, um, challenging. Uh, challenging because, you know, on paper it's so easy to understand on a literal level what the play is about, but when you drop down a layer to deeper and really examine the humanity behind these characters, when you build the relationships, the history of that relationship, um, the history of the circumstance in this play, you don't know who is racist. Which, is, which, was, which was fabulous to explore, because uh, it's not what it seems, it's, it's, it's not literal. And it, it, when the secret is revealed, it, it's quite astonishing. In, in terms of his, his open racism, uh, at least in the incidents that the play, in, in which the play reveals him, he is nonetheless a very intelligent, very highly cultured, man who uh, is sensitive on many levels to some you know, very high cultural issues. His love of classical music and of art and of, of the people with whom he associates is, is profound. I think it's easy to look at her and, and to say, oh, I would do the same thing. But I think when you're really presented with that in real life, it's, it's a difficult choice to make. When you know, it's easy to do the right thing when it doesn't cost you anything. I think LeBron is an everyman character. Um, anybody that's ha that has a dream or has had a dream and wants to do what they feel they've been put on this earth to do. Um, so I think every he's very relatable in that sense. 
And so for, for that reason, I'm drawn to him. I'm drawn to characters that are written like that. The, the play is, uh, although it's about race, and race music on, is the title of the play, it's about race on the surface. It also has a lot of other things in it. The, the play deals a great deal with, with technology. With, and I think in 1999, these things go hand in hand to a certain extent, because I think in 1999, the internet, the quick soundbite uh, world, the very fast open information world that we live in was changing. And I think there was a great deal of resistance to that change. Harvey is one of those people that absolutely was, he's a, he's a cultural elitist that was resisting that kind of change. What we had envisioned for the company to be is more to present stories that are true and universal to the global village that we all live in today. It, I think it's fabulous right now that we're seeing a lot more um, non-traditional casting, which is very, very exciting, both in television and theater. I think what's good about the play is that it acknowledges the progress that we have made and yet um, shows us just how much racism still is an issue. The play is set in 1999, but I think um, all of the issues that we deal with in the play are still very much uh, present. My favorite scene in the play, oh my God. Um, I, that would have to be, I can't really pinpoint any specific scene right now. However, there is one particular thing that comes to mind because of all the sexual energy that arises out of it. Am I allowed to say that? It's pretty fun stuff. <laughs> Just imagine rehearsals doing that. <laughs>